and welcome to Hero Power. I am your host, Avantes, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Zoroshio. What is up, gang? Let's go. And welcome back, Man at Arms. Hey, I'm alive. Yes, I, yes, I'm alive. Um, yeah, so probably this week only. It's, weekends are hard for me. Yeah. <laughs> He's alive so. this weekend only. <laughs> then, exactly. Then he goes back into the crypt where he was I, hiding, and we'll roll him out again next expansion. <laughs> the, the, the server room where he just sits on the Blizzard servers and reports news. <laughs> well, we are certainly glad to have you back tonight. We have a lot to talk about. Um, you guys know we didn't do a show last week because I was on vacation. I was out of town. And, and I was busy getting Legend, so that's my uh, Hearthstone of the week. So. Yeah, yeah. And uh, also, I've uh, had to do some rearranging at my home. I've had to move my entire streaming setup into a whole other area. So, yeah, it's been a busy week. I think I need a vacation from my vacation. <laughs> Sounds good to me. But, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk some Hearthstone because I've also been too busy to do a whole lot of that. Um, so this week, uh, and last week, I guess we, we're going to cover, we'll touch a little bit on that news and then we're going to go over the cards, but I guess really one of the big things is, uh, Dog's recent announcement that he's leaving the Grandmasters to pursue, quote, personal pursuits. Um, I mean, <coughs> TFT. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Is anybody really surprised that Dog is leaving to go stream more. I mean, we've all talked about no. this in the past. We know the players aren't making really enough to live on by doing Grandmasters, and Grandmasters puts limitations on when they can stream. So why wouldn't he? Well, yeah, and er er earlier this year, his living girlfriend, Hafu, also made this the same business decision for herself. So this does not surprise me at all. Yeah. He even said right after Vegas that he's considering dropping out because the competition that he thought was there was, isn't there. Like there's players and especially the fact that there's no relegation season one, the players just don't care. And like, he'll still, like he said, he's going to still play Hearthstone. He'll be back when the expansion drops, but yeah, he's going to be, but, Honestly, for him, TFT's better, and he's making money. He's making more money streaming other games, and that's perfectly fine. It's good on him, quite honestly. Yeah, I mean, you know, players yeah. like Dog have a much larger, uh, and and, and let's let's be honest, this is what it really comes down to. They have a larger streaming base, and people just watching them do a re regular stream then Blizzard has people tuning into the Grandmasters programs. That's why they're not allowed to stream when Grandmasters is on. So, Which, which is is a lot of the big hang-ups. We've actually, uh, we had this discussion with uh, Bloody Face last mm -hmm. time he was on the show, how we had to actually have him message uh, his PR rep to make sure that he could do the podcast while there was still... Uh, Grandmasters on the air, so I mean, there's a lot of hoops they have to go through, and when you're streaming some, some, somewhere in the ballpark of you know, ten thousand viewers, that's a large revenue hit to mm -hmm. play some Hearthstone, or or on your on your off day where you don't play that day, you can't stream and and make any money, and you're not getting paid because you're not playing that day, uh, so that's a huge revenue loss. Um, this doesn't surprise me at all, and it's probably the best decision for him to do. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, especially now that we're kind of between seasons, to have maybe two, three more players decide, you know what, this isn't for me. Mm -hmm. I'd, rather, I'd rather just stream on the weekends and make the money I was going to make anyway. I, I and totally do agree. And do better. Like, you know, guys like Silvername, who's... Probably has a bigger streaming site on the EU. Like Tice, I'm actually surprised is still doing it. I know he's in there for the competition, but he loves Hearthstone. But you know, Tice makes more money streaming on Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays than he would making playing Grandmasters. But he wants—I guess he wants, still wants to be in Grandmasters. Who knows? 
Yeah. So I I don't think we're going to see anybody else uh, drop out of uh, between season one and two, mainly because I guarantee you that Blizzard has already went to all the players and said, "Hey, anybody else? Yeah, we maybe. need to know now before maybe. we make the announcement, uh, before we make rele- relegation announcements that other players are coming in your place." We need to know now. Yeah. Uh, so that wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if they've if they've done that already. Yeah. And did we talk about who is replacing him? Not yet. I was just going to get to that. So uh, there was a lot of uh, discussion about who should replace Dog, and there was a. I know Zoroshio, you were pretty adamant about your choice for player to replace Dog, and who did you feel like should have gotten that invitation? Okay, so to kind of caveat this, I don't necessarily think that that language hacker should have 100% gotten this invitation. However, I believe he should have gotten the invitation ahead of the person they did choose. Well, you're um, not the only person. because Nothing against that player, but they based this off of a rule 6.2b that states that the highest earnings in the, in this year would take the spot and i don't think that's fair and that's and neither did a lot of the other players the other pros who did were not in grandmasters and one of those vocally took to twitter this week and bashed blizzard pretty hard about it and that's sidonia sidonia yes. was oh, like yeah. you know he said that it felt like they weren't that they didn't give a crap about any of the players tournament finishes and wins prior to this year you know Sidonia has a much better win loss record in tournaments than Gallon does now don't get me wrong Gallon is really good but Gallon's had a better 2018 2019 than Sidonia has and that's all Blizzard's looking at no the, no Most that's recent, not true. Most the, recent the, tournament wins. All they're looking at is Las Vegas, and that is it. Because yeah. it's the only tournament that has qualified for Rule 6.2B. And think- it, here's the thing. The Seasons 1 and 2 players were based off of uh, previous year's accomplishments. I think... To replace somebody between season one and season two, they should go under the same standards that those seasons were decided. And if that was the case, Gallon, who I guess we already said is the one one taking that spot, Gallon would not be picked. It would be somebody like a Sidonia, a language hacker, that had bang up years in 2017 and 18. Um, Gallon is a great player. Don't get me wrong. If they were making this decision... Uh, in season three in 2020, as of right now, I would say Gallon's the best pick. But they're not making this decision. And and really, the only tournament uh, winnings that, that this rule is based off of is just Vegas. That's it. And I don't. I just don't think that... I'm not going to say that Gallon didn't perform well in that tournament. He did. I just don't think he performed well enough to say he should be a Grandmaster. I think this would not be an issue if, say, like the HTC Tour Stop thing existed still. I think if we still had like a tournament like every month, at Dream and, like, if, or something. a major, yeah, Dream Hacks, ma- like major tournaments sponsored by Blizzard, even if they're not paying money out to them, that are like rec- or at least recognized by Blizzard. If we still had that system in place, I think this wouldn't have been an issue. I think they would have been like, okay, who's the best guy? Who's the who's the best player out of? All these actual t- instead of the online qualifiers, which yes, the online qualifiers have their place, but we need but having major events that yeah, like that Grand Masters is like this closed environment, but there's no mid- there's no middle point, there's no middle ground between Masters qualifiers online and Grand Masters. So- if there's that middle ground that was major tour stops or something like that, we would have this would not have been an issue. So is this is this just just more fuel added to the fire that Hearthstone Esports at Blizzard has absolutely no clue what they're doing? Uh, I think esports in general 
across the board are in a spot where it's just it's the bubble has popped and people have stopped like people honestly have stopped caring and paying attention to a lot of things especially like Overwatch League I have not heard any buzz about Overwatch League uh, Hearthstone nobody cares no, I have stopped watch, stopped watching Grandmasters after week 3 I haven't watched it since what so it's me? like it's like yeah there's just it's 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 not good yeah what gets me is Checho did such a good job in my opinion there were a couple little hiccups here and there but he he was piloting that ship and had it done well when the regime was changed over to the new hands, uh, it was like they wanted to be so different and make their own mark that they didn't even value what was successful during Checho's reign as head of esports for Hearthstone. And I think that is a huge disservice because he did a really good job. Um, uh, it's not in the show notes, but I'll mention it. A little Twitter a tweet's been going around. There's been a survey. And one of the questions on the survey is about Hearthstone Esports and diff- various formats, including a Conquest, a, a, uh, a Specialist Style, that's just bring one deck, but that's it. Uh, uh, there's a few other options, but uh, I'm hoping that means they're going to make a change. Um, we'll just have to see. They did say that they weren't afraid to make a change between Season 1 and Season 2, but so far we haven't heard any news. Right. And and if they if they decide to announce something, I think it would be for the best. If they stick with things the way they are, I think you're just going to continue to see a downward spiral of viewership and interest in the events. I, I think we're going to see something uh, or hear something, but I, I suspect we won't hear anything till probably the week after Saviors of Oldham releases. Uh, you're right. probably right because... The one thing Blizzard is not good at is communication. Yeah. So. And they'll likely say, this is the new system, and it'll apply to our tournaments that are qualifying for, was it Bucharest or Seoul, whichever, mm-hmm. I think it's Seoul, uh, no. that's qualifying uh, this week. And no, nobody I, will have plans, and it'll, be, yeah. No, I think they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna shove specialists down our throats all the way to BlizzCon. I think, oh, oh I, I, I agree. I think like I think we will basically it'll be like November we'll okay we'll have BlizzCon we'll get the we'll get the, whoever's the winner is out of the, all the grandmasters then we'll find out like we'll wait about two three months not hear anything not hear anything people are like game's dead there's no esports and then we'll hear some sort of announcement about what's going on for the next calendar year. Mm. Now That's speaking a- of BlizzCon. Speaking of BlizzCon, we did get some huge news that uh, one of the China Gold Series playoffs commenced and completed, and the winner is Lion with with three O's. Yes. Uh, a female competitor in China. So she will be the first female competitor um, at, at a world championship at BlizzCon, and she'll be the first woman representative since, uh, since Biza. Which was last year, mm-hmm. so uh, it's two years really, ago. Really, yeah, that's right. Two years ago, because I remember watching that in uh, in Avanti's basement. Yep. Um, this is this is huge news, and and she did really really well. I don't know if a lot of people pay attention to the gold series, but they have a huge player pool that competes for those tournaments, upwards of three hundred and fifty players. So for her to come out as the champion. That's that's amazing, and and a and hopefully that hopefully the whole specialist debacle doesn't overshadow the fact that she's qualified for BlizzCon and uh, is is going to make history. Yep, yep, that'll be awesome. Um, so we found out we are going to get our reveal stream um, with Kibler, Waylon, and Chris. He's back. Um, <laughs> July 31st, so that's just a few days from now, um, at 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, Pretty much, it's going to be like a lot of the past reveal streams. You'll be able to expect a full card dump after the stream ends. And then the patch will, um, for the pre-release events, will be happening shortly thereafter as well. Um, So, what do you guys think of this uh, lineup? 
Kibler, Waylon, and and Chris coming back. Uh, Matt, let's start with you. Well, two of the three. Two of the three there are great. Okay. Uh, you know, I love Kibler. Waylon's always good. Chris has gotten better. He's still not there yet. But I think, you know, I guess if they need to bring in a community guy, well, he's the only one left, I think. So might fair, as well do it. Fair enough. That's that's not not a bad assessment. Uh, Zoroshio. Here's the thing. I don't mind Chris as a host. It's when he starts talking during the play portion and eating up the airway of the other two people yes. who are supposed to be the specialist and and the uh, developer. He needs to, you know, introduce the, the other two, introduce himself, break down how it's going to go, and then once the gameplay pops up on the screen, he needs to shut up and do his job. And just be quiet until it's time for him to go back and say, hey, okay, we got to see these cards. Let's roll them back out. Okay, we're going to play this deck. And then he goes back and he shuts up again. Um, not that he's a bad personality. There just isn't enough is, isn't enough real estate in that stream for three people to constantly talk. Yeah. That's I all. It's that. nothing bad agree. against Chris. It's nothing bad against Chris. He's a good personality. Now, if they wanted Chris to be part of this, then, you know, let him and Kibler do it. Or let him and Peter Whalen do it. Don't have a third person. That's all I'm saying. What about um, what about Kibler, Whalen, and, I don't know, maybe Alec? Who that would be the, cool, but who, again. Who did the, I, I, the I, I, release for, I, for bees. I'd be down with that. However, it'd be the same thing. Alec would need to do the host duties, and when it's time for the play portion... He just needs to stay quiet and let the other two talk. Actually, That's... I wouldn't mind seeing... I think a really interesting stream would be Liv and Kibler. Because Liv is actually starting to... Be, I'm, one of, I'm one of my favorite people on the on the team that I this, to see. It's like she, her, she has energy, and I think Kibler would like play off her really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she did the most recent video, and, and I was really impressed by her work. Uh, but I am kind of surprised about Kibler. Um Kibler's kind of taken a back seat with, with the hosting duties, and he's been doing a lot of Teamfight Tactics streaming. Until recently, once they announced him as part of this uh, part of the uh, reveal, he's been going back to Hearthstone. But you watching his stream, you could tell that he's playing Hearthstone and just wants to play Teamfight Tactics. You can just tell. Uh, just, he has that air. So I'm surprised that he's actually sitting in on this. So um that just proves that Kibler is all of us, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I yeah. Agree with that. when Kibler is getting fatigued of Hearthstone, then you know it needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think the biggest part is the lack of game modes. Now, Tavern Brawl has knocked it out of the park, but that can only do so much. So, you know, I'm excited for this reveal. I'm really interested to see how excited Kibler gets about it. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good cards. All right, so that brings us to this week's Tavern Brawl, The Burndown. Uh, Ragnaros is looking for the strongest deck. Take control of a random deck. If you lose, you'll get a copy of your opponent's deck. How long can your deck survive The Burndown? So, have you guys had a chance to do this event yet? Yes, uh, I did. I, it was not what I expected. I expected to almost have a arena or a uh, Brawliseum style where I played until I got three losses. But it was basically, oh, you lost. When you queue up again to play another game, you get that deck. And I don't know. It d didn't seem as competitive as it sounded at first. Um, I got my pack. Uh, well... I, I got my pack in my inventory to, that's sitting there wiggling for me until until August 6th when I can open it. Um, it was fun. It, it, it culminated and topped off the other uh, tavern brawls that were for the the fire festival. And uh, it, it did well. Uh, Joe Mag did a good job. This brawl was, this brawl was fun early until uh, about uh, Mercenaries 280 showed up. <laughs> uh, that's when, uh, like, I was playing, you know, I, I got a warrior deck and had, like, two Black Hell Gun Spires that never, I could never pull off and a bunch of other stuff. And I ended up winning with it. I still played. 
Then, but once I got back into it, like on like Thursday or Friday, I got with the I got I got the uh, mercenary. I got matched up against the four patches pirate warrior that is mercenaries 280 at least on NA and got stuck with that deck because I lost to it and I faced it about six times in a row and I'm like okay I'm about done with this now thanks bye yeah that's something I noticed is that after a while later in the week there was only one deck because everybody lost to it and then everybody else was playing it and they were winning with it so you were getting the mercenary 280 versus mercenary 280 and so whether you won with it, you stayed with it, or lost with it, you got it again, it yeah. really didn't matter. So I don't know if that's intended. Maybe there's a coding thing they were practicing. I, I, I don't know. These, I, I was hoping they were actually practicing some of these decks that were that deck ideas they had. But none of these decks, that I, not one that I played, was legal. It either had two legendaries or more than two copies of a regular card. And uh, so I don't... I don't know, maybe they were just testing out, uh, you know, behind-the-scenes server work with it, because, uh, which makes me think they're working on uh, another game mode, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, this kind of stuff, when you see something different in a tavern brawl, it always get, makes me hopeful they're practicing or, or, or testing out a new environment, which yeah. makes me... Yeah, I was, I just for... SNGs. I went on EU last night just to see where I was at, and I was like, I got a Druid deck in about the three thousand area. Uh, is the wow. like, you know, I was like, so you know, that kind of tells you where where the population is. That deck had about four War Druid Lodies in it, <laughs> and I got to tell you what that that deck that that card rules when you can play it four times. The, here's the thing that kind of confused me is all these had like a code name and then a number. Which yeah. makes me think that all of these decks, they weren't pre-designed going into no. Tavern Brawl. They, they were literally randomodium decks. Mm -hmm. They were basically, the code name was basically like the flavor and text like text of the deck, or basically the cards that are put in the deck. Like, we want this one to be choose one, we want this one to be like random spells, whatever. The numbers are assigned as you go, uh, they're like... Random, like in, in the, the long, the later you get into the brawl, the higher the number gets. So, well, it's neat that they're they're testing out a technology like this that mm -hmm. makes yeah. a random deck. Obviously, it didn't conform to normal deck building rules, uh, but maybe that's maybe that's the, what they're trying, or maybe it didn't matter to them. Well, uh, I know, I really know, I've seen some screenshots of people with upwards of 50, 60, 70 wins with a deck yeah yeah so you know people like, are farming this brawl yes yes they are so all right well that pretty much covers it uh for the news and discussion this week um now we are going to get into a little more of the saviors of old doom card reveals like we've done the last couple of weeks um except this week We've got this really sweet uh, slideshow that I threw together for you guys. I, I, have, <laughs> what? I have to take credit for Zeroshio's work anytime I get a chance. Because <laughs> he would totally Man. do it to me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're right. I would do it to you, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, Zeroshio uh, toiled away all week uh, for us working on this uh, slideshow so that we could uh, take a look at some of the new cards from uh, Saviors of Old Doom. So uh, first up, we have the Titanic Lackey. Um, one mana, one one battle cry, give a friendly minion, plus two health, and taunt. Um, now we're by Mind you, this is not a card that's going to be in your collection you can get out of packs. This is the additional lackey. Now, they've kind of hinted there will only be one extra lackey added to the existing five lackey pool, making the pool six. Mm -hmm. But who knows, there may be more. Uh, but this is the lackey they told us, uh, or a lackey they told us would be added this set. Okay. Uh, so this is the lackey you get from... Uh... What is this from? Yeah, you get them oh. off any of the lackey generations. Oh, one yeah. Of any just of, lackey yeah. Generation. One of the six that you get okay. now. Gotcha. It just goes in the pool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. yeah. so this is in the general like lackey it. pool. I okay. like it. it. 
it, it's it's taunt, and we're seeing taunt kind of being important um, this set. And I think you're going to see a lot more board centric uh, plays and have being able to give a minion plus two health and taunt along with a one one body to the side of it. That's pretty good. I, I like this lackey as well. I think this lackey falls into the uh, marginal lackey pool, like the with, with the witchy yeah. lackey. I think this is like not the bet, like not the one you want. Really, kind of want. This, this isn't the plus, the plus, the two damage to any target lackey. Yeah, this isn't the two damage or the two drop lackey. This is the this is like you know one that you need a lackey or another minion on the board to actually make it worthwhile. I mean, I think this is. I think this is what I kind of like the pool needed. They need like a not as good lackey because right now the lackeys are really too good. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is good. All right, next up, we have Elise the Enlightened. So this is one of our uh, one of our saviors of Old Doom, if you will. Um, one of the members of the uh, League of Explorers. Um, this time around, Elise is a 5-mana five 5-5 five five with a battle cry. If your deck has no duplicates, duplicate your hand. Um... I'm going to turn this over to you guys to discuss, but real quick, I'll, the so we didn't we didn't report on cards last week because we did no show, and these were announced last week um, at uh, Comic Con, wasn't it? Huh? Yeah. And um, one of the big takeaways that the community got from these cards were the return of the no duplicates mechanic, which is really awkward being yeah. in a world where we have boom warrior yes uh and and i think i think what they're hoping is that bomb warrior is no longer the best warrior to play so it'll fix itself but i'm not convinced so these no duplicates and this one to me is one of the worst because it's no duplicates so you can play with duplicates so the only way this becomes real useful is if you're wanting to get duplicates of things you can't normally like legendaries i really don't think she's good uh we haven't seen all the cards in the set yet but so far i haven't seen anything that says oh she's going to be great in this deck um yeah strongly disagree i think she's actually the best of the four uh there's some really disgusting synergies you can have with uh floop and her, where you play her, and now you have two floops, and you can floop her, and basically to do, do she can you can basically repeat her effect as many as times as you like because you have floops, multiple floops in your hand now. This card is actually could be very degenerate and very powerful, and you'd only have and basically it could be like one of the last seven cards in your deck, and you'd be fine. Okay, this card is great. Do you play her to get two floops to play floop to get more more, more duplicates? Yeah, uh, you, you or okay. to to quote to quote coins and concede you go some from some floop gloop hoops to get your I combos hoop, going. Gloop hoops, that's phenomenal. I think that that is 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 great, but that unfortunately we're limited by hand size, and I think the hand size is going to pose a problem with this card a lot true yeah. I, I don't disagree all right moving on we have the anubisath defender it's a five mana three five taunt costs zero if you ca if you've cast a spell that costs five or more this turn so yeah i mean i if like it if you're playing uh a druid with some big spells this is a free 3-5 that just adds to tempo. Um, I yeah. like it, too. Yeah, we played yeah. the heck out of Arcane Tyrant, and this is a Arcane Tyrant with uh, less, slightly less, less or worse stats, but with Taunt. It's, it's good. Taunt, yeah. That's the important part to me, is it has Taunt. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. Um, moving on, we have Hidden Oasis. Um, this is a six mana druid spell. Choose one, summon a six six ancient with taunt, or restore twelve health. So, do we just 
do, do we think this card's maybe overrated, or do we absolutely love this card with, uh, uh, what's his name from the last set? No, this uh, this card this card's only good with the new hero power. Uh, like yeah. you don't want to pay six mana for either of those effects. It's bad. It's it's really bad unless you get the new hero power. And you're talking about Tal uh, Thaladris or uh, yeah, the Keeper's Thaladris. Keeper's yeah. Thaladris, yeah. Thaladris, yeah. yeah. Even with Thaladris, this is bad. Yeah, I don't think this is good with Thaladris because of the mana cost. Uh, you, six mana to do something and give you two more six mana uh, uh, cards. Mm -hmm. I just I. I think it's only good with the quest, and I honestly don't think it's that great anyways. I think there's better ways to play Druid. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, we have Overflow. So this is a seven-mana Druid spell. Uh, restore five health to all characters. Draw five cards. Um, I don't know. Again, uh, I kind of feel like the seven-mana is a little much for what this does, but maybe I'm wrong. The problem is not the seven mana, it's the hand size again. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's too much going on. In a deck that this runs well in, you're not throwing two or three cards down a turn. You th you have a bunch of big cards. And when you're not throwing th two or three cards down a turn, you're never going to get to a point where you can draw five cards safely. And also, you're also healing your opponent and everything they have for five as well. This is five health to the entire board. This is... Like, people are like, oh, God, Sprint. You oh, power creep Sprint. No, this is... I'd rather play Sprint. And you never play Sprint unless you have prep. And Jura doesn't have prep. Yep. Okay. All right. So, moving on. Uh, we have the Hunter Legendary, Dino Tamer Bran. He's a seven mana, two, four. If your deck has no duplicates, summon King Crush. So, Zeroshio? I, I like this card. I don't think... I think it's a card that people are going to try out and say it fails. Uh, then they're going to say it's not a good card. And then one of the tournaments in Europe or whatnot are going to happen. And somebody's going to find a way to break this card. Um, so, I think it's a sleeper card. Uh, I personally don't think it's going to be that great. It'll be kind of something that surprises people on the ladder. But it's fun to be able to get multiple, and I say multiple because you play one King Crush, you get a King Crush from this, and it's at seven mana, so you can bounce it back to your hand, you can do all kinds of shenanigans so that you get Dino Tamer Brand back to your hand. Uh, I just don't see a world that that's what Hunter wants to do. Yeah, I, I don't see where this card fits anywhere. Like, maybe Reno Hunter and Wild. Like would love this card, but mm -hmm. other than that, it's like yeah, actually that would that would be good. you know that's about I mean and the, and the fact that it has it has synergy with himself is pretty sweet, but other than that, yeah, it's it's I, I'm not I'm not a big fan of this card. Okay, I will say there's a lot of these cards, uh, especially legendaries, that I say ah, it's not a good card unless you're playing wild. So wild may be the this, place to go to have fun with this set. Yeah, this isn't Saviors of Old Doom. This is probably Saviors of Wild. <laughs> right. I like it. it. I like it. That should be the show title. <laughs> All right. Uh, so next up we have the Wild Blood Stinger. It's a six mana six nine beast with battle cry. Summon a minion from your opponent's hand and attack it. Nice. Um, I love this thing. I think this may be one of my favorite cards that we've seen so far. It's sick. This this card is the epitome of strong. Not this overpowered card, strong, just right at good solid 5 rating. This card rules. Like, literally, like, it's 6 mana too, so, like, turn 10 you can drop this and then Dire Frenzy it and have a bunch more bigger dudes in your deck that can pull out their garbage and kill it and also have big dudes left behind. This card rules a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, moving on. We have the Scarlet Web Weaver. So this is a six mana five five battle cry. Reduce the cost of a random beast in your hand by five. So uh, wait, this could make a one mana blood stinger. <laughs> it can, uh, or a free tundra is... rhino, or a free tundra rhino. Yeah. 
this is a solid card. Uh, I think it's a, a really good card. It's going to take some time for people to figure out how to build a deck around it because you really don't want any, you know, one, two, and three cost beasts. You can probably get away with some four cost beasts, but anything less than four cost, you're losing too much value on this card. Um, and then can you play Hunter without small beasts? We'll have to see. Uh, but I think it's a good solid card. Yeah, like this card really depends on if the meta can allow you to take a tempo turn off to have a huge tempo turn the following turn. I think this card's cool, but like, yeah, it's like really meta dependent. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, moving on, we have a new hunter secret, pressure plate. So it's two mana. After your opponent casts a spell, destroy a random enemy minion. Um, Deadly shot on a stick. <laughs> that's that's a good way to put it. Deadly shot on a stick. What about you, Matt? Uh, this card's pretty nice. Like you imagine, like uh, against Conjure Mage, they drop their giant, they conjure it, and then like it kills the giant. One of the things that pops out of their giant. It's pretty good. Um, so I think that just from that, like you know, we haven't had a. Uh, a secret trigger on spells since cat trick, so a lot of people are gonna get tripped up by this. That's that's not a that's that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and th this is better than snipe because with snipe you can say, oh, I'll just play a lesser value uh, minion and see if it gets snagged by snipe. This, they they have to worry about the minions in play. Okay, what if this is pressure plate? I don't want to play this spell and risk losing my minion. So then they have to play another minion into possibly a snipe to then be able to try to also play the spell. So I, I like I like what it does to the dichotomy of Secret Hunter. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I like it. All right. Uh, moving on. We have Hunter's Pack. So this is a three mana Hunter spell. Add a random Hunter Beast secret and weapon to your hand so you get uh you get a beast a secret and a, a weapon basically for one mana a piece i mean is that would, would would they say that's the epitome of value i haven't seen value like this since i've been to the flea market this is great yeah. I, this is a great card yeah this card this card is just it's, it's super good, especially if you're running Zul'jin. You'll just, just want to put this card in your deck. Or, like, it's an easy pick off Mark Shot. Like, just to, like, okay, you're going to Mark Shot something, and then this pops up. Like, yeah, you snap pick this every time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, Ducharmo. Sorry I uh, missed your uh, messages in chat. Thank you for joining us. Uh, moving on with our slideshow, uh, we have... A new weapon. I believe this is a yeah. This is a hunter weapon. It is the desert spear. It's a three mana one three. After your hero attacks, summon a one one locust with rush. Is is this just piranha launcher all over again? This is the card piranha launcher wanted to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a really good value. I mean, it's good cost. One three weapons and hunters have value, um, and the fact that you get a one one rushing beast, the locust is a beast that can fuel up your you know scavenging hyena and, and other car other cards like that. This is great, you, you, uh, you know, swing to face, and then now you have a five damage kill command. Uh, it, there's a lot of versatility with this one. I'm, I like it. Yeah. I initially was really down on this card, like, this is pure trash, this is garbage, whatever. And then I looked at it for a second, and I thought about it for a minute, and I'm like, wow, this is really good. Uh, I think you almost <laughs> run, I think you run this, I think you almost run this over the 2-3 uh, weapon in the Beast Hunter. I think it's that good. I think so, and and, and I think it's because you take out a lot, a lot of the small beasts. I think mm -hmm. you might still keep the Scavenging Hyenas in. Because oh yeah, scavenging it, it for sure. Because reducing them by five and having them freeze, okay. But I don't think you put anything else low cost. And this one one and the damage from the weapon circumvents the low cost um, minions that you you would cut from the deck for the other uh, hunter minions that we saw earlier. Yeah, and if you put if you have like a, that uh, one one beast that busts your other beast attacked by one on the board, this just makes the weapon even better. It's great. Yeah. 
All right, moving on. Uh, we have the uh, mage legendary Reno the Relicologist. He's a six mana four six. So uh, they kept the same Reno stats. With uh, Battle Cry, if your deck has no duplicates, deal 10 damage, randomly split, among all enemy minions. Um, I'm just going to say it. I feel like this is the worst of the legendary heroes that they've announced. This is this is a worse Meteorologist, and that's a bad card. Uh, meteorologist is based off your hand size and at least can go to face. I think if Reno read a split among all enemies, there might be a, a room to play this. But just the fact that it only hits minions, it's this is bad. Yeah, I I keep trying to justify. Oh, minions are better. Minions are better. But like, if there's if the, the minion meta doesn't exist, doesn't exist like we think it will, or if like you already clear the minions, like what is this guy going to do in your hand? He's going to sit there, rot, and be pretend like, and you're just going to look at him and be like, why aren't you healing me, Vivol? I hate you. Reno, I hate if you. Special, yeah. If specialists still exist, I could possibly see this in a deck as kind of a, a specialist tech card against a zoo meta or a uh, token druid meta. But that but is totally it. Are That's you really? Are, are you really bringing a singleton deck to a specialist tournament, though? Really? Uh, Super JJ would. <laughs> well, he's, well he, he's he's also playing team fight tactics now since the uh, point closed down. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, moving on, we have the Tortolan Pilgrim. It's an eight mana five five battle cry. Discover a copy of a spell in your deck and cast it with random targets. Um, does the fact that this is a copy of a spell instead of at pulling the spell out itself make this a little more valuable? Absolutely. I think this card is actually kind of a little bit bonkers. Like, if you're running, like, big spells that don't target things, like, say, Blizzard, fi uh, uh, Flame Strike, uh, Frost Nova, a few Yuck other... Yogg-Saron's Puzzle Yuck Box. Saron pu puzzle boxes. <laughs> I think this card is absolutely nuts. I think it's actually, if you are building a Singleton Mage, I think this goes in it. Because you kind of want that redundancy. Um, and if you you know, have Conjurers calling in your deck, because why not have Conjurers calling in your deck? Because that card's gross. Like, you know, the off chance it hits itself, hey, that's pretty sweet. Two new 8-drops. And you get the back end of the spell. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and, and there was a version of this card before in a previous set. I can't remember the name. But it just cast a random spell. It was also a Tortolan. Oh, you could just, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, Tortellan Primalist, and you discovered the spell, and it did. Yeah, you discovered a spell, but it wasn't one controlled in your deck, and it was bad, and it had bad things happen, but the fact that you, this deck building is good, and if a singleton mage deck works, and I think we need more neutral cards that have the singleton key, key, uh, you know, key phrase in it for that to work, if singleton works in mage, this card will probably be put in there. Okay, all right. Uh, moving on, we have the Arcane Flak Mage. It's a 2-mana 3-2. After you play a secret, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. Good card. Uh, yeah, I, I like this a lot. Yeah, this card this card is really good. Especially, like, you know, follow up to, okay, you play this and somehow it lives. Turn 3, you, follow, you, put a, you drop down the 4-3 that gives you a free secret. And then you do... Uh, two damage uh, burst of the uh, enemy, enemy board. It's really good. Even on turn five, it's good. If you I mean, just play even, the secret from hand. Even if you don't have a secret, just the fact that this thing is a threat of this magnitude is going to draw removal or force them to run minions into it to clear when they would hope to be going face to do damage. I mean, this thing might as well just say taunt or kill me first. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's it doesn't have enough as much pressure as say something like you know, uh, Bloodfin Raptor. But yeah, it's really good. All right, moving on. Uh, we have the Cloud Prince. It's a five mana four four elemental battle cry. If you control a secret, deal six damage. Great card. 
The other one was a good card. This one's a great one. You can actually play uh, the Flak Mage into a secret, doing two damage to all enemy minions, into Cloud Prince on turn 10. Okay. All right. That's pretty good. Yeah, this, this is great. <laughs> that, you know, the six damage can also go face, which makes this even better. Fire Elemental somewhere is just crying, <laughs> wishing he was this card. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving along, we have uh, the Paladin Quest Legendary oh. Making Mummies. Of course, it's one mana, as all quests are. And the quest says, play five Reborn Minions. Your reward is Emperor Raps. So Emperor Raps is not a playoff of uh, Eminem, but instead... It's a two mana hero power. Summon a two two copy of a friendly minion. This is going to be bonkers. I'm so excited to play with this. It was it's contingent on reborn minions, and as we're starting to see more neutral cards come out, we're seeing a lot of really good solid reborn minions at low cost. So uh, I cannot wait, not only for making mummies and quest paladin. But even further further than that, just playing Paladin, because uh, they are giving them some crazy new diversity in their, their meta selections so far from what we've seen. And I, I can't wait to be a Paladin main again. <laughs> this uh, making mummies. Sorry. Uh, I had to. Uh, anyway, uh, basically, this is really dependent. Yeah, like Zorosha said, this is really dependent on how Reborn does this set. And it's like it's the only quest we've seen that actually cares about a mechanic for this set. And if the mechanic for the set reborn is kind of not great, which I don't think I think the reborn's a great effect. I you know, this quest just falls off and just doesn't do anything. So that's that's my biggest worry with this card. Okay. The thing is is you're making a two two copy of a friendly minion. If say you did it with something current, like Mech Paladin you could make a 2-2 two -two copy of a full-out magnetized minion. Uh, you could play Kangor's Endless Army, get back one of your really awesome magnetized mechs, and then use the other other um, two mana you have left, and uh, which you have three in turn 10, and uh, make a copy of it. And it would keep all the death rattles and everything else. Uh, I, I like it. It also can copy um, the... Uh, the the one two that keeps all the buffs, uh, so you just keep endlessly generating. No, generating. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. the only card I could see that like this actually being absolutely disgusting with because like two twos for days and like no fatigue is yeah kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, control paladin's back, baby. <laughs> Moving on, we have uh, the paladin, the other paladin legendary, Sir Finley of the Sands. Because, you know, Murlocs in the desert work so well. Uh, he's a 2-mana, <laughs> two 2-3, two, with a battle cry. If your deck has no duplicates, discover an upgraded hero power. Uh, it is confirmed that these are the Baku hero powers. Um, this does have anti-synergy with the quest. However, this is exactly what I'm talking about, uh, where we're seeing two and three different directions Pal Paladin can go, and you can get some broken combinations uh, like having tank up or having the the, uh, the plus two attack, plus two health uh, druid hero power, uh, you know, even to the point of being able to pick a totem is, you know, that's, which I think is the worst. The worst one. Yeah, that's uh, the worst one. But still, I mean, that's, it's still a viable solution. Um right. I like this card. I think it. I think it's the best of the returning explorers. I, I agree, it's the best, and I think this. I hate this card the most because <laughs> literally, you somehow found a way to combine Keliseth and Baku the Meaning together to make one ball card of hate. Luckily, your deck has to suck. <laughs> so, you know. And the fact that he's not a one mana card, so you can't draw him, or one attack card, so you can't draw him off Christology. Thank you for paying attention to that, Team Five. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I I think 
he's not good. Like, in my opinion, Singleton decks will suck, and they're not good. There's nothing to support them right now yet. This is the, this is the one that I will annoy me the most, though I can tell, especially in a six set meta. This card, However, I, will you, hate, I will hate it. You you can get him off questing for adventure, and he'll become a four five. So, yeah, <laughs> it's even yeah. worse. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving along, we have uh, Paladin Epic Spell. Tip the scales. It's eight mana. Summon seven Murlocs from your deck. Again, Murlocs in the desert. Matt, what do you think? Uh, I hate this card mainly for the reason they revealed it on my birthday, and they, <laughs> um, and basically they killed Finja in uh, any Fin Paladin, and um, that basically it's like why would you run Finja when you can play an eight mana spell that just pulls all your Murlocs out anyway? So yeah, I hate this card just for those reasons, and I think it it's it's not it's not good. I don't think it's that good actually either. So that's the other problem. All right, it's not good. A lot of people have said, "Well, yeah, the deck thinning." Okay, sure, you can do deck thinning and have some weird Mechathun paladin, but why would you want to run a bunch of Murlocs in that deck anyway? So yeah, it's bad. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, you have the uh, Micro Mummy. It's a Paladin Epic Mech Minion. Two mana, one, two, reborn. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus one attack. I see this card, and all I can think of is Christology, Galvanizer, Micro Mummy, and just flood the board, and game's over by like turn six. I yep. agree. Yep, that's this card. This card is bonkers. This card is really good. <laughs> Micro Machine was a decent card, uh, but the fact that that the buffs go on your other minions, this is great. Um, now, Micro Machine buffed on the end of every turn, not just your turn. Uh, but yeah, I, I like this. This this card's fun. It's going to be great in Mech Paladin. Since uh, since Versika is not here, I'll speak for him. This card's terrible. It it just increases the ho already horrible Mech meta, and uh, they all need to go away. All right, moving we, along. We rotate we rotated out divide favor for this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, we have the Brazen Zealot. It's a one mana. 2-1 minion. Whenever you summon a minion, gain plus one attack. Alright, so it's a one mana, 2-1, that gains an attack every time you summon another minion. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I think this card could, uh, could get crazy, but I just, I feel like it's one health really limits the amount of play this card's gonna see. Yeah, it, and it does. And mainly this this just gives you another option for Paladin, which I like. Um, I like the options they're giving Paladin. Paladin's kind of split into three three different tiers in this uh, set so far. You have a very aggressive kind of tier, kind of a mid-range control, you know, to the edge of control, and then a pure out control tier. Uh, I'm really excited to see exactly what people do with Paladin. Uh, I just have to comment on the art. Uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but the, I don't know if it was meant to, but it looks just like uh, Hearthstone Caster Gia. Mm. They they actually showed a picture of her like making this face, and it's spot on. All right. Yeah, I, I think this card's okay in standard. Like, there's too many ways to just ping off a one damage thing right now. In wild, this card is absolutely bonkers, crazy nuts in Odd Paladin. Like. Especially since they have the thing that can uh, give one one health minions divine shield. Yes. This card, and especially with the with the two dude hero power and a bunch of other stuff that Odd Paladin does, this goes this slips right in, and this card is absolutely nuts in that deck. Is there any merit to playing this in, in kind of a tempo based Paladin well, with Crazed Alchemist? Maybe. I mean, like, like actually. I think this card actually just goes into Paladin. It's like, what's a 2-1 one for one? It's really good and like has the opportunity to like bash your face in for like 
two or three or five if you like do a mic do like a, a micro broad spread like coin yeah, it, it out turn two it's it, it it has it has potential to be absolutely bonkers and if you play it on one they have to deal with it that turn or they're yeah. dealing with three damage to their face because you're hero power yeah we're, we're allowed to play two ones again because patches doesn't exist and doesn't charge. <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh moving along we have uh Salhet's Pride. So it's a three mana, three one Paladin Beast with Death Rattle. Draw two one health minions from your deck. So when this dies, you can then pull out uh, the Brazen Zealot we were just talking about. So, of course, there's a lot of other pretty decent one health targets. And uh, I think the community had some pretty decent ideas for this. Uh, Zeroshio, how about you? Twilight Drake. It's yeah, a yeah. one health minion. Yeah. Uh, and it's right on curve. And yeah. our uh, uh, Roscon's Rumble gave us tools to have a dragon hand buff synerg synergistic paladin. So this might just be a random beast that you throw in just to get your Twilight Drakes. Yeah, it's also like you can throw this into Holy Wrath Paladin because literally, you know, that's half your deck is one health minions because you draw a bunch with Christology. You can draw more with Zealot's Pride and all those cards draw cards. Well, so Christology, let's... Christology draws one, one attack minions. One attack minions. So this will, yeah, but like all the one attack, or basically a, a lot of the stuff you draw in that deck, like also have one health. Like, you know, you're just it's... cycling novice engineers. You're doing mm -hmm. things that. You know, that deck wants to do, and this can fit right into that deck. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, we have the Sand Wasp Queen. So, again, this is a th uh, it's a two-mana, three-one beast, another one-health beast that can be pulled with uh, the Pride. Battle Cry, add two, two-one Sand Wasps to your hand. So, the two-one Sand Wasp tokens are also one mana to cast. So, Zeroshio? Yeah, I mean, two mana for three one, that's really good. That just the stats alone uh, are, are good. And then add to that you get two two ones. Um yeah, this is this is great. This is this is better than that squirrel squirrel regular card in in, in, in Druid uh, that gets you the two squirrels in your hand at, it, as a death rattle. This this is good. And they're beasts. I, I don't see any real synergistic way to kind of, you know, work with this in Paladin, but, you know, that's something to know. Yeah, I think well, it's like, you know, if a tempo kind of aggro-ish Paladin exists, or a Zoo Paladin exists, all three of these cards go into it. I just yeah. don't know if the deck is there yet, or if that deck actually exists, because I think I think mechs are just better right now. I, I, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next up, uh, we have comes half the show, huh? Here comes half the show right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have the priest legendary, high priest Amet. It's a four mana, two seven. Whenever you summon a minion, set its health equal to this minion's health. So yeah. Um, this Matt, card is gonna have this card's gonna have more Twitch clips than any other card. That's all I'm gonna okay. say. Right, now. I, I can agree, Matt. Let's start with your analysis on this card. This card just like and like this card is absolutely nuts. Like there's some super combo wombo potential with combo wombo potential with this card with Divine Spirit Inner Fire. Uh, like you know with Stone Tusk Boar, sure. Uh, but where am I, my mind first one is that seven health, and I can play this on turn on basically on turn ten. If I have the coin, I can play this, a wisp and star aligner, and I can be happy for the rest of the day. Because literally, I can pull like this can pull off a star aligner combo with three cards or four cards if you or four cards with the coin existing. So fifty percent of the time, it works every time. So half the time you're happy, a hundred percent of the time. Exactly. <laughs> so like th this card, this card, but like just in general, like you know, play this on four. 
you know, almost you have your health, you, you know, it keeps most of its health because it's a two seven on four. It's hard to remove. And next turn you follow it up with a, say, a Twilight Drake because Priest likes to run Twilight Drake. Guess what? That Twilight Drake is not a four one. It's a four seven plus the battle or battle cry on it. It's super duper good. Uh, I, so I, I think this gets nerfed. I really do. Really? Wow. I think it's. I think it gets popped down to like a two five. Did you did you did you put a six in the sheet? That's the next question. I'm pretty sure I did. I I put two sixes in the sheet. I think this is one of them. Oh wow. wow. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. This card is just I think absolutely bonkers. And if I don't pull this card, I'm crafting this card just for the shenanigans. Uh. I mean this this card's gonna be so much fun to play with. Even I mean take it over to wild and just unlock the door of possibilities so and and furthermore i think this card single-handedly finally gets stone tusk war uh moved to hall of fame, fame. we'll see <laughs> well, stone, now, that we, now they're done with war, basic cards it's now a possibility <laughs> stone tusk war has had uh, a few different you know apm priest used it there was a few different uh situations the quest road that, broke it yeah quest road it was broken card. So I, I think this might be time for them to finally uh, do something about Stone Test Board, and I don't think a nerf it does it justice. Right. Yes, I did, and in the sheet, I did give this one a six. All right. Uh, moving on, we have Grand Mummy. It's a uh, two-mana, one-two priest minion with Reborn. And Death Rattle, give a random friendly minion plus one, plus one. Um, I like this card. You know, Priest has had some really good two mana, one, two minions in the past. And I think this is one, This is right up there with with some of them. Like uh, what was, I don't think it was a one, two. I think it was a one, three. But uh, uh, the one that lets you go find a, de uh, discover a Death Rattle. I can't Museum uh, Curator. And it yes. was a one. Okay. Yeah, that card is oh. good. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. I, I feel like this card is on that level of good, and we may see this quite often. And I, I agree with you, and I think the card art here, I'm just going to call it bacon because it has the best flavor. Uh, it's nice. so cute. This this little grandma mummy with little baby mummies carrying them around. It's so cute. I, I love the art in this. I think that we're seeing the beginnings of some sort of Death Rattle Zoo Priest of some sort, where right. like this is this card like you know you run you run a one three on one all you know in that because you know it's Norshaw cleric because it's priest, and then like follow up with this and a bunch of other stuff on the board after it like seriously like it's solid I I think you know buffing up the stuff around it when it dies and the second time it dies it's easier to die because it comes back with one health this this card is really solid and I, I really like this card. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, let's see. We have a rogue legendary, Ankh, Anka the Buried. Five mana, five, five, battle cry. Change each death rattle minion in your hand into a one, one that costs one. This sounds like there could be some shenanigans had. This is my second six. Um, I think this one will get nerfed as well. I think the mana cost will go up or something. I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do with it. Obviously, the first thing you see is, is Mechathun Rogue and the possibilities with that. But I think there are so many high-costed uh, Death Rattles that this, this card just allows it to fit in the other five mana you need for stupid combos. Yeah, you yeah, you can curve this into a one one mech whelp into the five mana double death rattle spell like in in turn the next turn. This card is uh pretty gross, pretty bonkers. I hope there's enough bigger death rattles that we can get to make this card even better. Like, because right now the only real one that you would actually play would be the uh, Mech Whelp. But that's fine. A one mana, one one Mech Whelp that gives you two seven sevens is pretty good. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of this card. I think this is a really solid card. 
I'm looking at the seven mana three seven that, that on a death rattle does three damage to all minions, and now you can make that a a one mana one one that on death rattle is three damage to all minions and start throwing in other shenanigans to combo with that. It's ridiculous. I I think this card gets nerfed. I think it goes up to something like seven mana. And I still think then it's broken because it changes the card in your hand. You don't have to do the combos the turn you play it. Yeah. Um that's the it's, thing. It's the it's, fact it, that it, it sets up your hand for the next turn and if they don't go, oh they just set up for a big combo. I have to kill them this turn, and they can't. You're likely dead. It opens yeah. up OTK, and, and man, I love OTK. But the meta hates OTK when it happens. Yeah, like, I think, yeah, the fact that it's a 5-mana is a huge deal. Like, like that we were talking about that Hunter Beast that's a 6-mana 5-5. Five, five. It's like, okay, you lose some tempo to take a turn off to make a big tempo swing next turn. You really don't lose that much tempo with a five mana five five. You 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 you're fine playing a five mana five five, and like having a massive death rattle swing the next turn. Yeah, it is all, um, all day long. Exactly. I do I'm, that. It, I do that. This is like this is like I I, I dare I dare I say Lotheb good, but it's like it reminds me of Lotheb in a way. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this card is amazing. All for right. day one. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, we have a Rogue Epic Minion Whirl Kick Master. Two mana, one, two. Whenever you play a combo card, add a random combo card to your hand. Uh, Solid. Yes. Solid. Yeah. There's some... I don't know. I'm I'm not high on this card. There's some really expensive combo cards in the in Rogue that you'd like. I know I'll draw, like... Five, like you know, do some massive combo turn, and I'll draw like three of like the six mana five three rushers, you know, in a row, and I'd just be like sad. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I mean, you know. I, I could see that, but I mean, there's some really good combo cards that you could get off this as well. I mean, it's it's going to be one of those cards that you know I feel like it goes in the deck because the the possibility of the upside is so good. That you can just generate this. This just becomes an engine for card generation. Well, it reminds me of Mana Cyclone. You know, where Mana Cyclone, you play a bunch of small spells to play Mana Cyclone to get a bunch of random spells, and that you end up just increasing your value. Here, you play this followed by a few cheap combo cards to get more combo cards in your hand, and it's just more. It's just more tools. It's not really so much what the combo cards are. It's the fact that you have more tools than your opponent has to stop you. Well, actually, this reminds me more of like uh, that two, three Murloc and Shaman. What is it? Uh, tide, yeah. tide, tide Hunter. Oh, yeah, the the one that generates Murlocs. Murlocs. Yeah, I think this is more like that. But the, like the fact that it's a one two is kind of a big deal. I don't think it's. I don't like it has no other effect like on two. Well, I, when, I, you cold, be... when you cold blood it from the cold random cold blood you got, it's not, not now it's a uh, five two. So okay. well, that's true. <laughs> and you get a and you draw a card off it too. It's true. Yep. All, All, right. Right. All right. All right. So next up we have uh, a uh, rare rogue minion, the bizarre mugger. It's a five mana three five with rush, battle cry. Add a random minion from another class. To your hand, file spine. What happened to you? <laughs> uh, I think this card. This card doesn't go in any deck, really, um, unless you're really like deep into the Burgle stuff. I don't think this. I don't think this goes anywhere. I think you could actually get some shenanigans off this, getting some class cards that you class minions that have some weird synergies with Rogue. Uh, I, I love the art here because it looks like he might have just mugged himself. Because <laughs> um, he got the one really proud head, head, and the other one looks like he just had his his pouch stolen from him. So <laughs> that that makes me makes me giggle. But yeah, I think it's a solid card. I don't think it's great. Uh, and I think in that burgle rogue, when you start needing to make room for other cards, this is the first one you'll cut. Okay, all right. Uh, we have a new rogue weapon, the hooked scimitar. It's a three mana two two combo gain plus two attack. So you know if you combo this, it becomes a four two weapon for three mana. 
I mean, I, if, if you're six, playing a combo-centric deck, maybe? Or a 6-2 weapon with Spear of the Shark. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> Stop. This card, yeah, that, I think actually that just that noise I made is my opinion of the card. This card is gross. Okay. It's good, a good, solid yeah. weapon. Yeah, and, it's and, good. In Rogue, you have to have good solid weapons, or it's not worth, you know, discarding your hero power for those turns. Yeah. All right, moving on, uh, we have the Splitting Axe. Now, this is a new, this is an epic shaman weapon. Uh, it's a four mana, three two, with the battle cry, summon copies of your totems. Now. I want to just throw out there that of every card reveal we've seen so far, this card by far had the best video reveal behind it. Like every it every cool. set, there's one card that just has a phenomenally well done reveal video. This and one was the Lego video, this right? This was the Lego video. Yes, it was really cool. Awesome. Now, so what do you guys think this, of the card itself? <laughs> this axe actually looks like something you make with Legos, and and they actually made one in the video, and it's really cool. Um, I think this card is is a little bit sneaky. Uh, at first, you don't think it's all that good. I think there will be a deck that abuses this using Serpent Ward, but then players will learn to play around it, and then it won't be good anymore. This is. This is a weapon for even Shaman and Wild because you have played Totem Golem in that deck. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's, oh my god. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's about it. Like, um, like, we, the, only, the, only, the, only, the only the only card in Standard you want to hit off this really is the 3-4, uh, the everything Merlot, the everything thing. Yeah, the Nightmare Amalgam. Nightmare oh, Amalgam. Yeah. This will This will copy a Nightmare Amalgam, but like, yeah, great, you got a second 3-4 for 4 mana and a Overcosted fiery war axe, you know. Yeah. Woo, yeah. you know <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I don't, I don't see where this lives yet. There's, there's, there's pieces missing, and apparently, hopefully, they're not Lego pieces. <laughs> I don't know. A, a second three four, I'd pay, I, I'd buy that for a mana. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I rather, I rather, I rather, I rather do it with totem golem. I made, a, I made a horrible reference for a really. Bad joke. Sorry. Yeah, Most good. people are too young to even get that. <laughs> anyway. Hey, anyway, I, I live in that city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Moving on. Uh, we have now. This is where I want to talk about you know, my <laughs> half of the show. Um, this is the uh, Warlock Legendary Dark Pharaoh Takan. He's a five mana four four with a battle cry. For the rest of the game, your lackeys are four fours. So, on you play this guy on curve at turn five. For the rest of the game, any lackey you play or any lackey you generate and play is a four four minion. Um, so, and and for clarification, based on the video. It's 4-4 four, four in white text, meaning if it gets silenced, it will still be a 4-4. Four, four. So it's it's like not buffed card. stats. Correct. And and so. that is the way the uh, rogue quest, uh, cav the crystal cavern works. Yeah, crystal yes. core. Yeah. yeah, crystal core. And so this is, you know, crystal. this could be crystal core all over again. I mean, making them 4-4s... Four, Puts them just out of reach of being killed with Hellfire. It opens up a lot of great options for the Warlocks. And Warlock already has, you know, some pretty decent uh, lackey generation. It has one right now. Yeah. Which but, is really good. Yeah. But I, I'm excited for this card. And I'm excited for the possibilities that this is going to open up uh, deck-wise, and I look forward to playing this a lot. All yeah, right, I Matt, think it's going to be good. Hang on, it's, I, I want to get Matt at Arms' take on this first, because I know he doesn't necessarily agree with me on the same level. Yeah, I think this card's an absolute trap. Um, yeah, you have t 
total of two cards that you have access to currently for Warlock that uh, generate lackeys. You have the 1-1 one, one rat, and you have the 2-2 uh, two, two that kills a minion. Um, so that's a total of two, four, five, six lackeys that you can get as a 4-4 four, four currently. I think in a deck that you are running lackeys in, I don't think you have time to play a 5-mana 4-4 four, four, unless you go off some weird combos with discard, where you're discarding your lackeys and discarding a six, uh, the soul uh, the six mana six six that brings back any cards you soul discard. Warden. So you, soul warden, that's it. So like, if you have that combo, then yes, you want to play this card. But I think this card is kind of a trap. And unless unless, and I'm pretty sure we will, we will get another card that generates lackeys for warlock. Goes the ratio. <laughs> I think this card makes. A lackey based zoo twice as good as zoo is um, in the meta now, and it still won't be good enough. Okay. Hey. I think it's I'm, a good card. I just yeah. don't think the meta will allow for it to be a good deck. I'm, I'm going to hold off my rating on this card until we see all the cards, because I think if we get another lackey generator, yes, this card goes up by a point, but I still don't think it's good enough unless you are willing to go through, fly, fly, fly through some hoops. Which they give you the option in this set because there's a card we're going to talk about a little bit later that helps with that combo. So. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on, we have a uh, epic warlock uh, minion. It's a four mana three five beast. After your hero takes damage on your turn, summon a random three cost minion. So we've seen some similar. Uh, mechanics in other classes of summoning random uh, cost minions. Uh, Zerosia, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, everybody's going to throw this in their decks. They're going to summon voodoo dolls, and then they're going to take them out of their decks. <laughs> Men in arms? Um, I didn't... I was not a fan of this card until about this week when I discovered a new zoo deck that is kind of a self-damaged zoo, and it's actually kind of bonkers. And this just kind of adds into that deck because it works in the mana slot that I'm looking for. So I might try this out, and yeah, I might get sad and summon voodoo dolls and <laughs> and, and, and hate myself. Um, you also, where, have, uh, on the flip side, you could summon magic carpets. Or Mooklas. Or, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this, 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 there's there's a swing with this card. Look, look, at the, look, but, look at the smoke coming favorite, out of Zeroshio's ears. My favorite okay. combo I heard about this card, I thought about this card, was in Wild, of course, where you can run a Thorasan, and you can run this, and you can run the 5-5 five, five that damages you for uh, five, 5 every time you summon a minion. You treachery both those over, and then you play Curse of Rafam on your opponent. And as soon as they start their turn, they take two damage, summon a minion, then they take five damage, and the things repeat until they run out of board space. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I said, saviors of wild. This card, this card is this card is gross. I love it, and it's like things that I want to do in Warlock, and I love I love it. All right, all right. Uh, moving on. Um... Our next card is the Rift Cleaver. Now, this is a uh, Warlock Epic, 6-mana, 7-5 Demon, Battle Cry, destroy a minion, your hero takes damage equal to its health. So... I, I like this card. Um, I mean, it's, it's... It's a big dude. Moval and big dude. And you take some face damage. Uh, yeah. I, I worry there's not enough healing to support it. Now, people are saying, you're going to take eight damage and all this. Well, that's if you choose to destroy a large minion. You don't have to destroy a large minion. But it depends what the pro prevalent minion base is, uh, whether this card is worth playing. But I think it's a solid card. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's it's a waste of card. Yeah, I'd, I'd play this over Siphon Soul any day. Um I think this card is absolutely bonkers good. Um, you know, I don't mind taking the the four, five, six damage, whatever. Eight's a little high, but you know, I can work with it. I'm a warlock. Um, in wild, of course, because I'm talking about wild a lot now. 
this is this slots right into even warlock because you really want to get those seven those four mana seven sevens down as fast as you can and make free molten giants because uh this this dude is awesome in that deck yep okay all right um uh, moving on we have the expired merchant so it's a two mana two one warlock minion Battle cry, discard your highest cost card. Death rattle, add two copies of it to your hand. I think it just goes in the zoo. Uh, I know people are thinking of all kinds of shenanigans with mountain giants and yada yada yada, but I think this is just a zoo card that is, is basically treated like draw draw a copy of a card in your hand. Um, that's it. I like it. Uh, yeah, I love this card. This card is absolutely gross. Um, especially this is the this is the missing piece in that sword soul warden combo where you can use this to discard your soul warden, and when it dies, and will and it will die because mm -hmm. uh, it's a two one. You get two, two soul wardens back, so now that you can have two lackeys, two uh, and a soul warden, and your just discard pool. When you play that six mana soul warden, you get two lackeys and a soul warden. And then, yeah, go for it. Play your five mana four four that gives your lackeys four fours all all day long. Because uh, then now you have in, infinite four four generation that with good battle cries. I think this card, yeah, just on its own, it's great. In that combo, it's really interesting. And I think in like okay, I'm gonna bring wild because I play a lot of warlock and I play a lot of warlock and wild. Second, two more Gul'dans, two more Niz Nizas. Sure, I'll take it. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. We have uh, the Warlock Plague, which is called Plague of Flames. So this is a one mana. Destroy all your minions. For each one, destroy a random enemy minion. So if you have the same number of minions on the board as your opponent, this is a board clear for one. This yeah, is... And... Go ahead. And in a mech-based zoo where you're using mecharoos and snip snaps, this is great. Um, now we know what Rafam's scheme was all about. <laughs> um, yeah, this card is. This is actually, I think, the, the best plague of the five that we that we get. Um, this is, yeah, absolutely disgusting. One mana board clear if you have a full board, you know, of tokens or something that you really don't care about because you're warlock. Yeah. Uh, you know, this this is great. This is an absolute wonderful card. Yeah, and the yeah. animation, it is absolutely amazing. I mean, the the fact that, uh, you know, you can summon a bunch of 1-1 one, one imps and clear a bunch of 8-8 eight, eight minions, yeah, I'll take that all day long. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Moving on. Uh, we have the Evil Recruiter. So this is a uh, Warlock minion, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Battle cry, destroy a friendly lackey to summon a 5-5 five, five demon. Um, okay, so here we have more lackey synergy. But if you're building 4-4 four, four lackeys, you know, do you necessarily want to be just dropping them for 5-5 five, five demons? Maybe? Yeah, this card, this card was bonkers until I saw the Warlock Legendary. Now it's like, eh. All yeah. right, if I get this before I get the legendary, sure, nice. But if they're eventually going to be four fours, why am I worried about one extra one one? Yeah, it's it. If you're not running that legendary, and you're just putting this in zoo, it's great. Yeah, exactly. You don't play this card in the card. With the, you don't play this card with a legendary. You play this card in a zoo deck, or you are going wide and you have a big chunky dude that needs to be removed. Otherwise, he's going to be a... It's like, you know, the whole meme, oh, three mana, eight, eight. Yeah, okay. You know, that's that's basically yeah. what it is. It's it's what it is. But, like, you know, three, three, and a five, five is a lot different than an eight, eight. But it's... This card is this card is super good and immediately goes into current zoo build. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. We have the uh, Warrior Quest. Hack the system. Hack the planet! Sorry, had to be done. Uh, one mana, quest, attack five times with your hero, rewards, and, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce this, Anrafat's core. Anrafat's core. 
I've been trying to pronounce it all week and pronouncing it wrong all week. Uh, hero power, two mana, summon a 4-3 golem after your hero attacks, refresh this. And of course, the, uh, the golem is a 4-3 for three mana. So if it somehow gets returned to your hand, it'll cost three to replay it. Um, this... I like this uh, this quest a lot. I mean, Warrior's already so good, and I feel like, you know, it, it doesn't take much for a Warrior to be able to attack five times with the hero. So, you know, and then you're producing possibly two, four, three minions a turn. I mean, this just seems well, good to me. The problem is, is once you attack five times with your hero to then get the reward of the hero power, how much more attacking will you have? Uh, so how invested do you have to make your deck with weapons? Now, I think it's worth it, and I think it's good. But I think it's a very powerful quest. One of the better quests and power levels for this set. However, is it worth taking Dr. Boom out of your deck? Because it's no. really not worth running them together. And that answer hasn't been decided yet. We'll have to no, find out after decided. one day. It's no. <laughs> Unless Doctor Boom goes to nine mana, this is it's a it's a big fat no. Like <laughs> I think like the, I think this is yeah. I don't think this is uh, going to see much play as long as Doctor Boom Hero exists. Afterwards, maybe, and especially if we go to a more tempo style warrior, and if we get like a one three weapon for warrior, like we got with uh, the the. Uh, does Oz first mate? That'd be great. That'd be perfect for this card. But um, until then, no, I don't think this. I think it's going to be a little bit dusty, and I, you'll probably I, blow it off after the rotation. Personally, I think they need to give these golems taunt to be able to successfully. No, I, oust I'm fine with Doctor that. Boom. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think they. I don't think they. I think vanilla four three is fine. I think, like, it's. The refresh is the biggest part. That's the biggest part with the, the that's worthwhile. Yeah. And like, if you can somehow get something like you know, Sultheray to attack three or four times a turn, that'd be great. But, um, like yeah, otherwise, but cost, but, uh, but exactly, yeah, what well, cost? cost. Well, about <laughs> six if you do about three times. Yes. All no, right. but, <laughs> but yeah, with, with Doctor Boom still on standard, no, this doesn't this doesn't see any play. All right, we got eighteen more cards, so let's uh, let's just kind of burn through some of these here. Um, the uh, next is the Warrior Legendary Armagadillo, Armag Armagadillo, yeah, uh, six mana four seven taunt. At the end of your turn, give all taunt minions in your hand plus two plus two. And this is a beast. Thank goodness it's not a Mac. <laughs> Great card. I just don't think it'll be good enough. Uh, yeah, there's there's taunts and there's a lot of taunt stuff in Warrior, but nothing to do with it. So I'm not a big. I'm not. I don't see where this goes. All right. Uh, moving on, we have the Epic Warrior Minion, the Blood Sworn Mercenary, three mana, three three battle cry. Choose a damaged friendly minion. Summon a copy of it. This Warrior, card's bonkers good. Warrior does damaged friendly minions so well. I like this card. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, this card's just really good. Just really, really good. Alright. Uh, next we have the Live Wire Lance. It is a three mana warrior weapon. It's a 2-2. Two -two. After your hero attacks, add a lackey to your hand. We haven't seen lackeys be real impactful in Warrior, and I don't think we're going to see them be impactful here. But it, it's a good utility, especially if you're going to build that quest. Uh, it's yeah. okay. It's not great, but it's okay. It's Yeah, it's a 3-mana 2-2 two, two weapon. I wouldn't play that if it was... I like, I look at this, I look at Fiery War Axe, and I'd rather play Fiery War Axe. Okay. Yeah. Well, too many. Uh, next, we have a 1-mana Warrior spell, Into the Fray. Give all taunt minions in your hand plus two plus two. So it's a one mana version of the legendary minions ability. It's uh, a great card in a deck that won't get played. Yeah, it's like actually, you know, this is actually probably the best card for Taunt Warrior, just like you said, Taunt Warriors the best. <laughs> I'm not gonna see any play. 
What about in wild? Uh, no. Okay. There's so many better warrior decks in wild. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So then we have the warrior plague, which is the plague of wrath. It's five mana. Destroy all damaged minions. Is this just auto paired with uh, uh, whirlwind? Um, actually, actually more with uh, what's that other the other one? Uh, the warpath. Warpath. Yeah, I think this like with warpath is good. I think this might see play over brawl in some decks, maybe. But it also has the same problem that warrior has, where like. It's kind of like what I like, what uh, some people call the Godfrey problem, where it's like, yeah, Warrior already does this anyway, so why do I need two more cards that do that? Do this, so. Okay. Yeah, you're putting two cards in a deck to do what Brawl does with one, and uh, yeah, I just don't think it's great. Okay. Uh, next up, we have a Warrior minion, the Frightened Flunky. It's a two Toint. mana, two two, with Taunt. Battle cry, discover a taunt minion. Uh, I like this card a lot. You know, two mana, two two taunt. You play it on curve. Discover another taunt minion. So I think this does go in the current warrior builds. Um, I, I mean, it's a taunt, and it can get you uh, Zilliax. Uh, there's a lot of other good mechs that are taunts that could also get you, or just get you a good taunt. I mean. Hell, it's just a good card. I like yeah. it. I like it even more that it looks like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. Yeah, like this, like you know, this like you know, cause there's a lot of comparisons to the Stone Hill Defender. I think Stone Hill Defender is actually a better card than this. Uh, but I think this card is it's okay. It's 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 good. But like, what are what are you going to do with taunts? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. So a one four for three is better than a two two for two. Absolutely. Uh, basically, my thought, my thinking is Stone Hill Defender. On turn three, can soak up two attacks. This can soak up one. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. okay. Moving on, uh, we have the neutral legendary minion, Colossus of the Moon. Ten mana, ten ten, Divine Shield Reborn. Mad at Arms, we'll start with you. This card's going to be amazing off Conjurer's Calling. <clears throat> yep. That's about the only time you'll see it. Um, yep. It's just a big 10-mana 10 10-10 10, 10 dumb dork. But, like, off uh, Sea Giant, Conjurer's Calling, you'll see this, and you'll just hate yourself. <laughs> it's also going to be a snap pick in Arena. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, we have the Desert Obelisk. It's a 5-mana 0-5. If you control three of these at the end of your turn... Deal five damage to a random enemy. Now, uh, I think the important thing to note here is that five damage is per obelisk. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Yes. So if you have three of these in play at the end of your turn, you have the potential to do up to 15 points of damage to the enemy's face if they have an empty board. Yep. Shenanigans. This card is this card is actually the, this card and the next card are like my two favorite cards they reveal just because they have that kind of starliner issue where like yeah they're kind of bad on their own but like if you like find a way to abuse these in a way you know especially with Myra's and like um, say uh, Dollmaster Dorian in some way with a bunch of these in your deck that's just absolutely fun and bonkers I think this card like uh, it's probably bad but the design design the deck building challenges of this and the next card are awesome. So also to note, Mass Resurrection will resurrect multiple copies of the same minion if they died multiple times. Um, so if you've had three die during the game, and they're the only minion that's died, you're guaranteed to have. Now, is that worth 15 damage? Probably not. But, I mean, shenanigans can be had with this card. Very good. Yeah. All right, moving on, uh, we have the Mogu Cultist. It's a one mana, one one neutral minion. Battle cry: If your board is full of Mogu Cultists, sacrifice them all and summon High Keeper Raw. Now, High Keeper Raw is a ten mana, 
2020 minion that says at the end of your turn deal 20 damage to all enemies <laughs> i love this card so much this card is I, like ancient one meets like something even like sillier i think this like this one i think is going to be extremely hard to pull off but i think it when it's done and like the, we've already seen the animation and the animation is absolutely sweet uh i think this card this card's a lot of fun I want to see the explore, explore and Goro equivalent of this card that fills that replaces your entire deck with Mogu cultists. There we That's, go. I just want to see it. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Neferset Ritualist. It's a two mana, two three battle cry. Restore adjacent minions to full health. I, I just want to point out, I really enjoy seeing minions designed around strategic placement. Agreed. Yes. I, right. I, I think this could go in a zoo style deck. Yeah, I like it. This goes in the, this goes in that priest deck with the seven mana dude. Oh, or seven health dude a lot. Oh wow. Um, yeah. yeah, like I think this card is um like people are like, oh okay, whatever. It's a two three that does something. But yeah, it's a two three that does something really good. Um, you know, especially if you have a big butt. Um, so it's, I think this card, this card's uh, pretty. It's, it's a sleeper card. It's also important to note that when reborn minions come back, they're damaged. Yeah. They so they can be health, healed. Yeah. They're not. They're not set to max health of one. They're damaged, so they can be healed. So you can run a reborn minion in, throw this in between in between them, and restore their health, and then you know still have solid minions on the board. Yeah. All right, uh, next up we have the Infested Goblin. It's a three mana, two, three, taunt, death rattle, add two one one scarabs with taunt to your hand. And of course the scarabs are one mana, one ones with taunt. So um, three mana, two, three, taunt, that gives you two additional one one taunts. Yeah, they're little uh, speed bumps on the, the highway to the face, but you know that speed bump could be all that's could could be the important thing. I think it's great in token druid. Uh, agreed. The sickest card is super good in token druid, and I think it's I think it's yeah I think it's a just a good card in general, especially because it has taunt. Okay. Yep. All right. Next up, we have the generous mummy. Uh, it's a three mana five four with reborn. However. Your opponent's cards cost one less. <laughs> yeah, the, these type of cards are interesting, and you think, oh, there'll be a way to do it. It's they're just not good, and you think, okay, Silence Priest. But no, yeah, Silence there's Priest better the, there's better minions at three at three mana to Silence, and you would lose a Reborn. Yeah, I'd rather play a five six that I may it may not be able to attack the next turn. Yeah, than a, a thing that makes their opponent their stuff cheaper. Yeah. Yep. Okay. card. Alright. Uh, next up, we have uh, Sunstruck Henchman. It's a 4 mana 6 5. At the start of your turn, this has a 50% chance to fall asleep. Soroshio, they finally made you into a card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jokes. This is a bad. Just like me. If I was a Hearthstone card, I would be a bad card. And this is a bad card. Yeah, this does actually. There's I had to talk half a thought of this with Silence Priest, but if like this, the turn that they it gets to summoning sickness, like and you have the turn to silence it. Guess what? It's still not being able to attack because they have summoning sickness again. This card, yep. uh, this card is bad. Yeah, yeah, and again, same same thing as before. Sure, Silence Priest, but there's better four mana minions that you want to silence. Okay, yep. all right. Uh, next up, we have Mermy, the cutest little mummy in the set. He's a one mana, one one Murloc with Reborn. This is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite Murlocs they've ever printed in a set, and I think he will go in a lot of decks. To have, I mean, basically, it's it's a Murloc version of Mecharu. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. This is like yeah, this is. Yeah, this will go into any, like, okay, I need a one-drop that's sticky. Here we go. Doesn't yeah, even care can... if it's a Murloc. 
two of these, two Mecharoos, now you basically have four of the same minion. And we yeah, exactly. haven't really had that in Hearthstone yet. Not in not in uh, standard, not in one yeah. rotation. Uh, where Magic the Gathering has a lot of that kind of stuff. So if you're running a zoo-based deck or a token-based deck and you just want to have sticky minions on the board that are going to be buffed, this one is going to be a must-include right next to Mecharoo. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up, we have the Fish Flinger. It's a two-mana, three-two. Battle cry, add a random Murloc to each player's hand. It's good. Or, or, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a good solid card. It's you know, three-two for or three-two for two on a Murloc deck. That's something you want. That's a bad card. I don't like it. Okay. Um. I, I don't want to give my minion my opponent anything. Really. Not even if it not even if they have nine cards in their hand and they're gonna overdraw next turn? No. Well, yeah, but that, you know, that's a whole nother argument we can go thirty minutes on whether that matters or not anyways. Alright. Next up we have the Anubisath Warbringer. It's a nine mana, nine six, death rattle. Give all minions in your hand. Plus three, plus three. You, Another you amazing Codger's Calling uh, result. Nah, I, I don't think so. I, you don't Conjure as much. Or yeah, you can, okay. Yeah, maybe. But Hitting this off Conjure's Calling would be good. It's Yeah, that's about it. Like, like there's only one deck that plays this, and it still doesn't go on that deck, and that's that rogue that, rogue deck that puts makes all your make, makes all your Death Rattles cuffs a uh, one ones. Yeah. Like, it still yeah. doesn't go on that deck. Okay. All right. Uh, we got the Wasteland Assassin. Five mana, four two, stealth, and reborn. It's two um, jungle panthers stapled together and cost two more. That's about all I can say about it. It's not that good. Yeah. I, I don't like it. I mean, the stealth seems really enticing, but I, I think people put this in the deck and then realize it's lackluster and take it back out. Yeah. All right, and uh, the last card we have on this uh, epic slideshow is a uh, neutral common minion, the Vile Fiend. It's a two mana, two two, with life steal. Um, it counts as a demon, so... You know, this is going to get Demon Synergy and Warlock, and I could see this going in Zoo as a life gain. Mm. I'm not sure there's actually a card slot for this card anywhere. I think you getting it off the two-drop Lackey would be sweet. That's about yeah. the only time I think we'll see it on an actual that, construction That was going to be my point. I think we'll see it a lot off of Faceless Lackey, and we'll hate seeing it off Faceless Lackey. That we'll hate this card so much that possibly... People will start including them in uh, uh, zoo decks or or just token based decks, just to have that extra life steal. Uh, honestly, I think this would be great in token druid. All right. Uh, I'd rather play the. I'd rather play the the uh, the one that generates two one twos. Yeah, yeah, this. you play that too. Yeah, there's only thirty cards in the deck. Okay. Anyway. Well. <laughs> that's that's going to do it. That gets us all caught up with the releases going into uh, this next week, which is uh, the final full week before the release. Um, so we're only, what, seven, eight, nine, next, ten days away. By next weekend show, we will have all the rest of the cards to talk about. And then the following week, we will start... Uh, uh, we will give you a solid what three days of meta to uh, to play a deck. Yeah. So yeah. So, Good news: uh, the meta will be solved by then, so we'll know exactly what we're playing. That's, that's yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, all right, uh, gang. That's that's my least favorite thing about a new set is people. Uh, Twenty four hours after the set's been released, they're like, "Meta solved. These are the best decks, and they're horrible. We need nerfs <laughs> right away." I hate it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. If you have any questions or concerns about the show, please send us an email at heropowerpodcast at gmail.com. Hit that subscribe button on below on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Give us a follow on Twitch to be alerted when we go live. 
if you would like to chat with us regularly about the new cards or be up to date on what we're doing, check out our Patreon over at patreon.com slash hero power for as little as a one dollar a month you can get access to our patron only discord guys you have anything you want to throw in before we cut out of here um enjoy your time off right now because when the new set comes out hearthstone's going to take its place to the top again and everybody's going to be start playing it and uh so far this set looks really good i am really excited uh, I'm enjoying my break from Hearthstone right now, but I'm excited for it to kick back up. Uh, I'm just going to plug my spreadsheet because I love that thing. Uh, just put numbers in it, please. Yes. It, yeah, you know, let us know what you think of the cards, and I'll post a link somewhere in Discord, most likely on Twitter um, as well. Just, like, please, you know, put numbers in. Let me know what you think of the cards because I do a lot of work for that, and I love and I love seeing the results on that thing. Yes, we love to look at what you guys think of the cards, especially... A month or two after the set releases when we can go back and have a good laugh at our at ourselves over uh rating cards you know fives and sixes that aren't even played in the meta so <laughs> when avanti says by our at ourselves he means mainly at me yeah well you know so oh. all right yeah. well uh, i just have to say one more thing remember i got conjurer's calling right fair That's enough true. Fair enough, he did. So, all right, gang. Well, that's going to do it for us. We'll see you all again next week. And don't forget to use your hero power. Especially after swinging.